It has been a little while uh, since my last video, um, but I honestly think I may have a new favorite place to chase carp. Um, Bear Lake is awesome, guys. Um, first time, you know, I've, I've been to Bear Lake a lot in my life, but it was actually the first time I've ever gone up there after carp. And, um, and I really regret it is taking me this long. You can see right away the visuals there are awesome. Uh, for those that don't know, Bear Lake is a lake... Uh, on the border of Utah and Idaho. Um, it is a pretty deep lake. It's a pretty high elevation lake, pretty cold water generally, but the the, uh, the shallows get cool. Um, has a lot of different fish species. Um, you know, Bear Lake Cutthroat is one of the cutthroats, part of the cutthroat slam. Um, so a lot of different things in Bear Lake, but, but the carp fishing is phenomenal. And this place is got kind of a turquoise color. It's very clear. Um, and I kind of divided this up into two different videos. Um, so I'll jump into it and kind of go over this, but guys, this, this place is awesome. Uh, the first thing I want to say is if you've never done the sup fishing thing, this place is awesome for the sup. A lot of the fish that I was targeting, now, you can do it from the shore for sure. Um, but a lot of these fish, especially when I'm on the sup are in, you know, two and a half to maybe four feet of water. And the SUP gives you the ability to get out into those areas and actually still see the fish and present the fish. Now, in these deeper areas like this, um, that's one situation where I will typically go pretty heavy on my flies. Um, you know, when I threw various things, trying different things, I'm not sure I found one go-to fly. If anybody has a recommendation for Bear Lake, I'd like to hear it. Um, I definitely caught some on Cart Mall. Um, there were a couple other... Um, like the carp carrot that worked all right. I actually threw a gotcha at one point and I caught a couple on the gotcha. Um, and, and one thing too is because of the way that, that the water was clear, um, I, I will tell you that the fluttering of the fly, like so, so I typically really like slow sinking flies. Um, and there were two problems in this location that made the slow sinking flies not a real good option. The first was... Um, because of the current, there was a lot of current. I mean, this lake is a big round lake. There's really no bays or anything like that. Um, so you get a lot of water movement coming into the shores where it shallows up. Um, it, it, a lot of water movement, a lot of current. Um, so those slow sinking flies, even if you put them in place, the, the water's moving so much, it's hard to be real accurate with them. So you need something that gets down quickly. The other thing was, is these fish didn't seem to like that. When a fly came down fluttering slowly in front of them, it actually seemed to scare them. And I've seen that before, um, where the carp really, they don't like that when something's fluttering slowly. I've seen it the other way too, where they love it. Um, but here it definitely seemed like if that fly came down um, and dropped pretty quickly in front of them, that they would eat it um, and aggressively. So uh, heavier flies. Um, again, I don't have an exact fly to use, but uh, carp mall worked well gotcha worked well Car carrot worked well um i also threw kind of a brown version of the cart mall and a tan version of the cart mall um they all worked but nothing seemed to and it might have been the day i was there nothing seemed I, I definitely had a lot of refusals more than i typically uh feel like i have and it also could just be bear lake uh it's a fairly busy lake there's a lot of people there they could just be a little bit extra wary um i don't know but we it was still pretty successful. Um, it was a pretty windy day, um, which made things complicated. But as I've said before, uh, wind is kind of a catch-22. While it makes it difficult to be accurate, it can make it difficult to see the fish, it also, it also provides a heck of a lot of cover, uh, both from the visual aspect and the noise you might make when trying to get in on these fish. Um, I will tell you that it was difficult to get inside 30 feet on these fish. Um, again, that might just be a function of, of the lake. Um, and again, this is my first time up there. So I, I know there's other people that, uh, that fish up there quite a bit. Um, they may have more insight into that. Um, but, but I think it's worth a try. Go up there, check it out. Uh, it, it's just, it's just a fantastic lake. Now, a couple of things about Bear Lake, um, and I've heard this from several people that the carp there aren't real big. And I, I, I should say the carp in the shallows aren't real big, um, up in the area where we as fly fishermen will target them. Um, for whatever reason, you don't see a lot of the 10 plus pounders, 
um, up inside the shallows. Uh, I'm going to try to get out there next spring and hit it pretty good uh, post or pre and post spawn and see if we if I can find some bigger ones in there just because I love the way it sets up. I just think it could be just too much fun, uh, especially if you can get some big ones. You know, most of these were five to seven pounds. A um, lot of fun. Um, good fish overall, but but it would be nice. that That's kind of the one thing that it's lacking is, you know, some, some bigger fish. Uh, having said that, even though they're a little bit smaller, the visual aspect, the turquoise color, uh, the beautiful valley, um, just the whole experience of carp on the fly at Bear Lake. I, I'm not even kidding. I think I think this may be my new favorite place to go. Um, and I'm going to have to try to make more trips up there. So uh, I have another video coming shortly on uh, how you approach Bear Lake um, waiting. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, I apologize. It took me so long to get another video out there. Uh, this one was a heck of a lot of fun to do and to do the edit on. And again, guys, please like and subscribe. And I will check you guys out later.